Hey there, happy coders, and welcome to another Happy Coding Let's Code video where I spend an hour or so fiddling around with code and uh, talking through it so that you can follow along if you want or if you just want to sit back and uh, watch. I'll post the code that I that I write at the end so you can just kind of copy paste it. Um, so that's kind of how these work. Um, over the last couple of days, I've been working through a few P5.js uh, examples around arrays. So I made this oscillating lines, oscillating, still don't know how to say that word, uh, example yesterday. And, you know, it's kind of fun, shows this, uh, this animation of some lines going up and down. And, you know, that was fun. So I think I'm going to keep going with the idea of using arrays and uh, play with the idea of maybe 2D arrays where you can have like a grid of, of items. Um, so that's where my head's at. And yeah, without further ado, maybe I'll just jump straight into it. So I'm going to go to the P5 editor, like I always do. And this gives me my, my coding environment where on the left I have my code, I have this run button, and then on the right I have the result of the code. And um, maybe real quick I can start off by making an array. And maybe I'll fill that array with... Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. Let i equals zero, i is less than some number, does not really matter right now because all of this code is going to change. I just want to talk about arrays for a second. So I'm going to fill them up with maybe random numbers. Um, oh, whoops, I didn't give my array a value. So I'm going to call that like or a variable name. Uh, also a rough start. Um, I'm going to maybe just call this like my array. Um, I don't probably want to spell it correctly, maybe. Um, and then I'm going to maybe say my array of i equals random of 255, random number between 0 and 255. So it's like a shade of, of black or white. And then what I can do is very similar to what I did last night, is like calculate the, the position of a, of a few items based on, um, based on what's in the array. So what I can do is like let i equals 0, i is less than, and at this point my array has a length so I can use it. Um, i plus plus. So I'm just going to iterate over all of the elements in the array and do something with it. So what I will do is maybe draw a rectangle from some position. So maybe first let me calculate um, this value. So maybe I'll say like const just x I guess equals what it's going to be i times some or no it's going to be width times some number and I think that number is going to be i divided by my array dot length this is exactly what we did last night so if this is confusing to you maybe go back and watch the uh, the video that is around oscillating lines or if you don't feel like watching the whole video you can just read through the code to see what it does you know these are options um but so i've got my x i think i've got my x anyway and we'll figure out in a second whether that's right so i'm going to say x and the y is just going to be like zero i think and maybe i'll say like const cell width here equals width divided by my array dot length so that each uh, cell in my sort of row uh, takes up the same amount of width, so width, and I'm just going to fill up the whole height of the canvas here. So I'm hoping that I will see length, um, a bunch of rectangles that go from the left to the right and fill up the screen. Let's just see what breaks. Okay, but I, I do actually see that. So I'm hoping that there are 10, so one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is actually use the value that I calculated here. So maybe I'll do that. So I'll say like, uh, my goodness, I'll say something like fill, uh, and I'll get the value from my array at element i. So this for loop iterates through the array from i to my array dot length, it uses i to calculate the x of the rectangle and this width could actually be 
calculate it outside of the for loop, so maybe I'll move it, because it's not actually based on i, it's only based on my length. I could really calculate it all the way up in setup, but whatever, I'll, I'll keep it here for now. So back in the loop, um, I calculate the x value based on what i is. So when i is zero, my x is gonna be zero. When i is, let's say, five, it's going to be five divided by my length, which is 10, so it's 0.5 here so width times 0.5 puts it in the middle and then like when i is let's say 9 9 divided by 10 is like 0.9 so width times 0.9 is over to the right edge of the canvas and so this is how you get like a different position for each element in your array and then hopefully i am using the value that i filled randomly in my array uh, to set the fill color and then i'm drawing a rectangle so now i hope they are different shades of shades of gray and they are cool and every time I run it'll be different because I'm, I'm setting them to random values here cool so uh, from here this is this is sort of one one dimension of, of what I want to do uh, kind of literally um, where I have a row of, of things, of, of rectangles. And I could keep playing with that. And that would be very similar to what I did last night where, you know, here for each row in the array, uh, or each element in the, in the row or each element in the array, I do something. In this case, I bounce the, the line up and down. Um, and I could, I could keep going and I could play with that, but it would be very similar to, to that example um, maybe like these are changing shades over time or something like that um, but that's not really what I want to play with tonight I want to play with a, a concept called 2d arrays which is where each element in my array right now it's a um, it's a number but what if instead each element of my array was an array and that's kind of a weird concept but it's also super common and super powerful once you get into kind of like anything involving a grid or anything involving sort of two dimensional data um, or even, you know, higher dimensions. So you even like 3D or 4D or 5D arrays, um, but we're not going to get that far into it. We're just going to have a 2D array that um, is an array where each element of that array is an array. So without further ado uh, I don't know why I keep saying that <laughs> I'm going to uh, do a couple things so first I'm going to rename it I should have maybe called it cells from the beginning but I never plan these ahead of time so I'm just going to rename this whole thing cells 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 just because my array is not a good variable name and it's going to make less and less sense the more code I write so I might as well change it now so my array is called cells still does the exact same thing but now what I want to do is, um, so first maybe I'll move this 10 to a, to a variable. Yeah, so I'll say like const, and what I'll call it is, I'll have rows and columns. So I'll say rows equals 10 and maybe const columns equals, that's not how you spell that word, columns equals 10. You know, we can change those, we will change those later, but for now I'm just gonna put them in variables. So for this part of the for loop, what I'm going to do is for let C, no, for R, I wanna say the, the rows first. I'm gonna do the rows first. Mm, yeah, so R is less than rows, R plus plus, same, same deal, we're not, we're not changing any logic yet. We're just kind of renaming and restructuring the what we've, what we've called things in the code. But um, so this it, it does the same thing. I'm just using different variable names. So now I'm iterating from r equals zero to r is less than rows, which is ten. So it's going to go up to nine, and then r plus plus. So it's going to increase by one. So I'm filling the array with this random this random value. Okay. So. Now here's where the magic might come in. And what I'm going to change is instead of cells r equals a random value, what I'm going to do, and I actually never remember how to do this. So 
uh, you, what you can do is Google JavaScript to DRA and uh, spell it right. And I think there's probably many ways to do it, but uh, yeah, you can hard code it like this, which is helpful, but I, I want to hard code it to a bunch of values and like, I'm not going to copy paste a hundred of these and then change it every time I need to change the, uh, um, the number of, of cells in my, in my grid. Okay. So this is just setting it to a new array, which I think makes a bit of sense. Um, you could get really clever, but I'm just looking for something that's kind of readable. But I think that new array idea is probably what I'll go with. But instead of that, I'll just do this shorthand. I think this will work. So now I'm saying cells are, so for each of these kind of rectangles, instead of giving it a random value, it's now an empty array. And what I want to do next is write a for loop to fill that inner array. So the array that's inside of that first level, um, I want to fill that with a random value maybe. So what I'll say is like, let C equals zero, C is less than columns, and then C plus plus, not to be confused with the, the language. Um, and then I'll say cells are, which gives me the array that I just created here and I'll index into it at C, and then I'll say equals random random value uh, between 0 and 255. Okay, so I think that initialization is, is done. I'm, uh, you know, I, I need to debug it. If it, if I run it and doesn't, if it doesn't work, like I'll, I'll come back to it, but I think that, you know, what I am intending to do is there. Um, next, what I need to do is change this for loop, because right now I'm assuming that the array is full of values and it's not. Now the array is full of arrays. And so I need to do another kind of nested for loop down here to, to draw something. So what I'll do is I'll start with um, something similar to what I did above where I kind of renamed these just for my own my own ability to, to read my code. Um, so I'm saying R and C for like row and column. I could maybe just say row and column instead of R and C, but whatever. Then I'll have another uh, loop in here. So this, um, this for loop is looping over the first level, the first layer of array. So the, the array that we created here is an array. Uh, so that's what this for loop is doing. And now I need to loop over the inner array, that is the array we created here. And I need to do just basically the exact same thing as I did in setup. So let C equals zero, C is less than columns, C plus plus, very similar. And I'll match my curly brace while I'm here. And let's see, so can I tie this up? I should probably figure out what this is on, a, on the windows. I don't actually know. Uh, so I always have to go up there and click it anyway. <laughs> Um, so I need my X, which will be, I think, uh, so X is left and right. And so that's going to be C, uh, divided by columns because, uh, you know, I'll talk about this in a second, I think, but like columns are the, right now, what you see on the screen are, these are columns. And so the x is the like which column we are at based on how many columns there are which is very similar to what we've already done but um, can be a little confusing if you have to think in terms of like two numbers instead of just one because what we also need to do is calculate the y and i do something a little weird when i'm working with 2d arrays where i switch the order that i calculate things in and i'll talk about y in a second but i want to put my y up here first and we're going to say that's height times, and then very similar, r divided by rows. Yeah. So then I can say fill of um, cells r c, right? And then what I want to do is draw a rectangle at x, y, and then cell width. And so cell width is the same, I think. 
uh, actually I can maybe change this to columns and then I need cell height cell height equals height divided by rows okay I am absolutely sure that something broke I'm sure that I made a typo or something but let's just see what this looks like oh wow I am pleasantly surprised cool so that looks like it worked because I'm seeing what I kind of expected. I'm seeing a bunch of different shades uh, for each, each cell in my grid. And to really test it, what I'll do is change some of these numbers. So what if they're a different number? And that looks like it worked. You know, it'll stretch based on, based on the size of your window and based on how many columns you have. So here I have five, one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five. And maybe I'll talk for a second about uh, some of this, like some of this logic. So um, the important thing, or what I find important when thinking in terms of 2D arrays is remembering what a row is and what a column is. <laughs> and that might sound silly, but it really helps me kind of reason out whether I'm thinking about X or Y or which which of the uh, like array indexes I'm talking about, whether I'm talking about the left one or the right one, or you know, in, in, in higher dimensional arrays, even more than that. But um, so the rows are like, stacked on top of each other. So this is one row, top row is here. This is another row stacked like below the, the, the first one. This is a third row, this is a fourth row, this is a fifth row. And columns are vertical. Columns go up and down and they are like next to each other left and right. So this is a column, this is a column, this is a column, this is a fourth column, and this is another column. And so, that's why I use like width divided by columns to get my cell width because let's say my canvas is, uh, let me make this math a little easier on myself. Um, so now I have four columns, one, two, three, four, and I want my cell width to be the width of my whole canvas divided by the number of columns so that each column takes up the same, the same amount of, of like cell width. Um, each column is the same width. And you know you can kind of think about that in terms of, so columns is four right now, one, two, three, four. And so width divided by columns is width divided by four, which is kind of saying the same thing as width times one over four or width times 0.25 which is why each column takes up 25% of the total width of the canvas. And same exact thing with cell height. But then when we get down here into the for loop, the reason I kind of calculate my Y first and the reason I put the R first, so it's, you know, this is kind of personal preference, honestly, and maybe it doesn't really matter, so I don't know if I really should be bothering explaining it, but whatever. Um, I start out with R, which means I'm iterating over the rows. So when I'm at uh, here, when I'm at cells of zero, say, I'm talking about the row here, right? And when I'm at cells of one, I'm talking about the row that's here. And I'm talking about the row that's here when I'm at um, cells of two. So I start out with R, so I'm going from row to row, and then I say, so now that I'm in that row, now I wanna look at the, the cells in that row. So if I'm at row, say one here, then I wanna be at which column in this row. And so if I'm at zero or one or two or three in this case, um, and then I use those numbers that R and C. So R is how far down into my grid I am, and C is how far to the right into my, my grid I am. Then I use those to, to calculate my Y and my X. And again, it's a little goofy, and it's kind of personal preference, but I, I use Y 
first and I use R first because imagine if I had switched these. Let's say that I said um, const x equals uh, based on like the first value that's here. That would mean that my first element in my array is actually this column. And the second element in my, my outer array would be this column. And again, it's personal preference, but I, I like to think about the values in my array sort of being placed in the same order that they're being displayed on the screen. And so that's why I calculate the Y first, because that's what this number represents. You can play with it. And if that didn't make any sense, I think that's probably okay. <laughs> I'm kind of just uh, rambling about why I put my Y first. It doesn't really matter actually. Um, but what I'll maybe say is like, maybe challenge yourself to do it the other way and maybe draw out like where in your array is a grid cell and then where on the screen is that grid cell and see what happens if you if you basically if you do this if you say like my first value is my x value my second value is my y value see what that looks like and see how that feels like and get back to me <laughs> see if that makes sense uh see if you have a different opinion than me uh anyway that was like a 15 minute ramble on whether you should put y or x first this is this you're <laughs> You're in my house, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, I have I have a 2D array now that shows a number of cells, and I can change that kind of on the fly here. So I can say maybe 10 and 10. And I've got this cool kind of checkerboard pattern, and you know that's that's fun. And I could honestly end it there and be like, here's your example. Here's a 2D array that that draw all the stuff to the screen. But if I'm being honest, so far, you could do everything that we've, we have so far without arrays. You could just have a nested for loop that draws a square at a random color and eh, it, would, it would work, right? It would, it would do the exact same thing. So what is the point of using arrays? And the point of using arrays is now that we have the data sort of in a, in a variable, now we can mess with it. Now we can play with it. So one thing I might do, for example, is cells R, C, minus, minus. I don't really know what this will look like or feel like, but let's just see what happens. So as I decrease the value over time, my cells are getting darker and darker because they're they're getting closer to zero and in fact they're going negative which you know this actually seems to work okay because processing or, or p5 is being smart but maybe i'll check that in a second but anyway they're getting smaller and smaller so the fill value is getting smaller and smaller so the fill is getting darker and darker which is why they they sort of start out um at their random values and then they fade over time and you know you could probably do this without arrays but it would it would get kind of difficult and it would get harder and harder. So um, this is one thing you can do. Maybe I can play with this idea and say minus equals maybe random value between zero and five. So now they kind of fade out at different speeds maybe. Maybe not so uniform. Um, so that's fun. And I think, I think I'm gonna stick with one now that I'm trying to trying to figure out what I want to do. Actually, I'm going to maybe, maybe I'll put this in a variable and I'll say like uh, const fade speed equals, you know, one so that I can play with it later. Fade speed. So I start my cells out at random colors or random shades, and then I fade them out over time. Um, while I'm here, I might just double check that I never go less than zero. So um, should I constrain it or have an if statement? I'll constrain it, I think. Constrain. Cells RC zero and max of 255. Five. I'm never in danger of going over the max, but whatever, it, it needs a value. Cool. 
All right, so I've got this this animation that kind of is is by itself and and you know kind of plays and then it's over and you know that could be fun that could be cool you could play with other ideas where maybe some of the cells fade faster than others maybe you know there's other things you can do maybe sometimes they go up so you give it maybe a random value between negative five and five you know that might be cool but what I want to do is I want to play with user input so I want to maybe check out uh, the p5 reference and I want to see is there, is there like a mouse moved yeah yeah, cool, cool, cool. So, actually, do I, I don't even need this, do I? Do I need this? <laughs> mm, maybe I don't. Maybe I can do this in draw. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is, as I move my mouse around, maybe the, the cells that I mouse over, maybe they pop back to 255 or, or to white and I was thinking of doing that in like mouse moved or like mouse pressed or something but I think I can just do it straight in draw here yeah so what I'll do is say um, I want to calculate like a mouse mouse R mouse R <laughs> Uh, const mouse r equals and what is this going to be? This is going to be mouse x divided by what? Divided by width. So this gives me like what percentage through the through the width of the canvas I am. I'm going to do what with that? I'm going to multiply that by the number of rows. Wait, oh, I messed something up. So it's getting back at that 10 minute uh, ramble that I said earlier. So this is actually mouse r is rows times mouse y so mouse y divided by height because the row that i'm in oops, and let me slow this down a lot point one maybe so i'm not doing anything with mouse r but i just want to talk about it for a second so mouse r is so right now i have 10 rows so i figure out mouse y divided by height so like when i'm down here i'm at like 0. 0.5 and then i multiply that number by rows so if I'm at 0.5 and I multiply by 10 I'll get 5 so I'll get the the row of the of the cell that I am in and I think I might need to convert that to an integer um, so back to the old p5 reference I don't know why I keep closing this tab I should just keep it open is there a way to like floor it yeah yeah So I'll floor the results so that if I'm at like 5.6 or 5.5 .5 or whatever, it'll just pop down to five because I really just want the, the index, not, not the precise um, like decimal place or anything. So then I'll say const mouse C equals floor and same, same uh, calculation times mouse X divided by width. Yeah. And what I'll do is uh, cells are uh, mouse r mouse c equals 255 so i'm saying give me the the row and the column of the cell that my mouse is over right now and change that value in the in the grid to 255 so pop that cell back to white and let's see what breaks Okay, cool. So that, that seems to be working, actually. Now I want to go speed my number back up. So now they're fading, and I can pop them back in. And that's kind of cool. I think I like that. Um, as I'm playing with this, I'm thinking that... There might be a bug, so I know it's possible to like go off the screen with your mouse. So let me see if I can trigger that. Oh, there, there you go. Um, so yeah, if I go off the canvas with my mouse, I'll, I'll, like be greater than width or less than zero, or greater than height or less than zero. So 
like let me try to get to be less than zero so i think if i drag i'll go off yeah yeah, yeah. um i'm not sure exactly what that oh yeah right so it's going to like at negative one four is what that's telling me um uh okay so so what i need to do is maybe say like if mouse x is greater than zero and mouse x is less than width and it's going to be a bunch of ands um, and mouse y is greater than zero um, and mouse y is less than height then i do this otherwise i don't i don't care about the mouse if, if the mouse is off the screen then i don't pay attention to it is it control t no it's not i really wish i knew what this was um, okay, so I've got my mouse X compared to width and my mouse Y, so I will maybe do it that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I will no longer break my, my sketch when I go off the screen. Yeah, that's working, cool. And that's, that's kind of fun, it's kind of slow, I think, so maybe I'll increase that quite a bit. might be a little too fast and you know if you've watched any of my videos you know that now I'm going to spend the next 90 minutes playing with whether it should be two or three <laughs> uh, but I'll try to maybe resist that um, but that works that, that that seems to be pretty cool uh, another thing I could do is let's see instead of saying that this is 255 so instead of like popping it back to white maybe what I will do is give this a random value I don't know we'll see I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not. No, I don't like it. Nah, let's just go back to 255. Yeah, it's gonna just kind of flash and uh, I'm not feeling it. So 255 it is. Yeah, okay, this is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let me think about this. So next, a couple things I could do. I kind of want to add comments, but let me think about, yeah, maybe not. Um, one thing we could do, as always, is play with color. So maybe this is, let's say, RGB. So maybe instead of a shade of black, it's a shade of red. You know, you could play with that. Um, another thing you could do, you know, first of all, you know, you're not limited. So this is RG, this will be a shade of yellow, I guess. Go green to yellow. <laughs> That's really, uh, really bright. I think I hate it. Maybe I'll go to R and B. That'll be a little bit darker, I think, yeah. So now it's like between um, blue and this kind of magenta color. So you could kind of play with the, um, the, the color scheme that you want to mess with so you're not limited to, to black and white. Um, I'm kind of limiting some of my some of what I do because um, I don't use any objects but you can still get to a lot of colors even even without anything more advanced than changing the R G and B here. Um, so another thing let's see so what if I do like cells what if I do like 255 minus that so like kind of flip the like whether it gets darker. So instead of getting darker, it'll get lighter. Yeah, so instead of starting at blue, it starts at, at magenta. So then I can reset it back to being dark and then it'll kind of fade back to um, back to magenta. So let's see, so what if I kind of mess with it this way? Do this just switch it back? Probably. Oh, is that? That's not what I expected to happen. Let's think about this for a second. So I've got R, G, and B. So I start out, so if I let it fade, everything's at zero. Oh, so it's gonna go negative. Oh, that's why. Um, so that's, that wasn't a good thing to do. <laughs> uh, that's okay. So it was just always black because I was always gonna subtract 255. So it was always gonna to go to negative right away. So any, anyway. Uh, but you can subtract 
you can subtract the value from 255 to kind of invert it. So to show you what I mean a little bit more explicitly, maybe I will start, I'll start over actually, start over with um, them starting randomly. And then when I move my mouse, they're white. So I'll do the 255 minus trick, which will invert it. So now they fade to white and I can, I can make them black. So I kind of liked the idea of, of the colors. So maybe what I'll try to figure out is which colors I want to go with. So I've got R, G, and B. Maybe let's try like G and B. R, G, and B. I think it's going to be like neon green again. I don't know, it's not. It's like cyan to, cyan to blue, it's not bad. Maybe I'll do something like this. No, I hate it. No, I hate it. I think I liked, um, I think I liked R and B. Oops. Yeah, maybe. You know, you're also not limited to 255. You could change that number too. So, ooh, that's kind of like a flannel pattern. I'm actually into that, I think. <laughs> that's kind of cute. I don't know why I say flannel, but whatever, you know what I mean. Um, I think I like that. That's kind of that's kind of cool. So it's like dark, dark blue or like up to pink. It's almost like the P5 pink. All right, I think I like that. So now, what could I do? I could... I could also play with these numbers. I haven't really messed with these at all. So I could maybe, let's see if I increase my rows. So now you see like I'm not limited to making them squares because um, I haven't done any any special logic to like make sure that they are the same width and height. I based the, the cell width and cell height based on how many columns I have, how many rows I have, and what's the width and height of my canvas. Uh, so it could be that they end up being like rectangles instead of squares and you know I'm personally fine with that but you know it's, it's stuff you can play with so let's go the other direction and let's make it really like let's just have a lot of them so I think I like kind of when it first appears it being kind of slower yeah that's cool and then maybe so I guess it kind of depends on the um, how many how many cells I have really I could maybe get smart about that but I'm not going to um, I think I'm just gonna always fiddle with the values whenever I change how many how many cells and, and how many rows and columns I have yeah okay cool I'm trying to think of like if there's anything else I would like to do but that's pretty close to what I had in my brain when I when I kind of sat down to to fiddle around with two D arrays. I also kind of just like the color scheme. All right, I'm gonna stop messing around. <laughs> um, cool. So to to summarize, maybe uh, what what did I do? So I created this, this array, this array of cells. And then I iterated and for each element in the array, I, I didn't just say every element in the array is a value or a number. Uh, what I said was every element in the array is an array. So that's what this line is doing. And this is called 2D arrays. Uh, because you know you can kind of see why it's 2D. It's not just one row anymore. It's a whole grid or a whole checker box of uh, check checkerboard of of cells. Um, then I said, now loop over the array that I just created, the inner array that I created inside of the outermost array, and now fill that with a random value. And so you set you can see like for each row in the array there are 10 or 25 or however many elements in that row. So that's where you get the, the 2D array kind of idea from. Okay, then in draw, and I don't think I need this background anymore. 
because I'm just filling the screen anyway. Um, then in draw, I calculate cell width and cell height. I could have done this ahead of time, but it doesn't really matter. I kind of like it down here because it's closer to my drawing code, but um, the width and height are going to be width divided by how many columns I have or height divided by how many rows I have. And then I say like, if my mouse is inside of one of the cells, then pop that cell back to a value of 255. And you could, you, you could use that value in different ways. So I started out just doing like black and white, but eventually we went down to colors. And then what I did was iterate over every cell in the array again. So it's going through every row in my sort of outermost uh, array and then iterating over every column or every like for each column in that row, if that makes sense. Um, to, to get at the value that's inside of, of that particular element. Um, so then I can mess with that, and that's kind of the power of arrays. And so what I did here was I subtracted some, some number from it so that it fades over time, made sure that it didn't go out of bounds, so make sure that it didn't go um, you know, below zero or, or greater than 255. I guess I could just, I could also add one instead. Now it goes the other way. So this is kind of just the inverse of what I was doing with the 255 thing. Um, but whatever, I like the fading. Um, okay, <laughs> and then I calculated like where to draw the cell. So Y and X are based on my row and column. And I'm not going to ramble again for 15 minutes about why Y is first. But maybe uh, as, a, as a homework assignment, maybe put in your own words why Y is first. <laughs> or tell me why I'm wrong. I don't know. I'll take either one, really. Uh, and then I fill my color with the based on the value um, that I calculated, and then I draw a rectangle. So I'm doing something for each element in my 2D array. And it ends up being this, this kind of cool, kind of, I don't know, kind of zen, um, kind of pretty pattern where it fades over time and kind of interactive as well. So yeah, that's it. Um, one thing that popped into my brain as I was messing with that is like, what if it's white grid lines instead? And maybe <laughs> that's kind of cool. I don't hate that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, what I could do is something like this. Oh, so weird. It almost looks like almost like 3D uh, based on like how like which which lines are light and which are dark. Uh, it kind of looks like a shadow. Uh, it's kind of unintentional, but it's kind of trippy, right? Kind of <laughs> it kind of looks uh, 3D. That's really fun. That's kind of that's kind of cute. I don't know. I could I could play with that. I think I, I could go back and forth, but um, you know, you you can play with it. <laughs> you can you can decide which uh, which option you like better, which color you like better. I think I like that one better. Um, cool. So I think that's it. I think that's where I'm going to stop. So I'll say. If you've watched this far and if you've coded along or if you just take the code that I'm gonna post in the description and you come up with your own thing, please let me know. I'd love to see it. So pop a link either down in the YouTube comment section or better yet, come to happycoding.io and come to our forum. And this is where I hang out. So I would, I would definitely love to hear from you here. Um, whether you have a question or if you just wanna like share what you're working on, um, all of the above would be awesome to see. So yeah, uh, don't don't be a stranger is what I'm trying to say. I think. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I think that's it for me. So as always, I'll say thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day and happy coding.